Welcome to another program in the Tech AV technical training series in which you are going to learn about the bench grinding machine. In this first program we shall discuss the basic purpose of the machine and its parts. We shall also demonstrate typical procedures for using a bench mounted machine. The primary purpose of any grinding machine is to shape metal workpieces. Most general engineering workshops will possess at least one bench-mounted general-purpose type grinding machine. Such a machine is this bench grinder, which, with practice, can be used for sharpening such items as lathe cutting tips, drill bits, cold chisels, domestic tools, and center punches, to mention but a few applications. Excess metal stock is also quickly removed for rough shaping operations in repair or manufacturing operations. Let's examine the construction of this typical bench grinder. Firstly, notice that it is well secured and solidly bolted onto a firm base, in this case, a workbench. Power is supplied via the shop supply by an electric motor, which carries the two grinding wheels on a common shaft. One wheel will usually be a roughing wheel, that is a coarse grit type, the other a medium or fine grit wheel. The motor is of constant speed rating and is controlled by a simple on-off switch. Each grinding wheel is made of specially bonded abrasive material, which we shall discuss in more detail later on. Each wheel is partially covered with sturdy metal wheel guards to provide some protection to the operator should a wheel come loose. There is an inner and outer guard around each wheel. Transparent spark shields made from heavy-duty plastic, offer limited personal protection against grit or chips flying off the work. Workpieces are usually supported on or against these adjustable tool rests. Each machine must carry a specification plate or decal. This is a legal requirement and must display such information as motor kilowatt rating, spindle speed in revolutions per minute, and voltage requirements. After the break, we shall demonstrate practical usage of the bench grinder. The bench grinder obviously is a useful tool, but like other machinery, it must be used correctly and safely. Before use, the machine should be checked visually to ensure maximum safety. Check that the machine is firmly mounted at its base. If necessary, secure any loose mounting fasteners. Check the wheels for problems such as cracks, chipping, uneven wear, or clogging. Don't use a machine that has a damaged or worn wheel. More information regarding abrasive wheels and maintenance is covered in the second part of this series. The tool rests must be positioned such that there is a gap of no more than three millimeters between the face of the wheel and the edge of the tool rest platform. If the gap exceeds three millimeters, then there is a danger of material becoming jammed in the wheel. Serious wheel damage and injury will result. Ensure that the wheel guards are fitted and secure. Never use a machine if the wheel guards are missing or loose. It is wise to inspect the power cable to the machine to ensure that the insulation is intact and the plug is not damaged. Always report any power lead damage to your supervisor or safety officer. 
With the machine in order, you must now pay attention to personal safety. Always wear adequate eye or face protection when grinding. This is a very strict rule that must always be obeyed. Shielded plastic goggles of the wraparound type are suitable for most light duty work. Full face protection with a face shield is better for heavy work or people who wear spectacles. Ordinary spectacles are not suitable for eye protection. Ensure that you are not wearing loose or dangling items of clothing or jewelry when using any machine. When starting the machine, stand to the side and switch on. Then, when the wheels have reached full speed, you may move to the front to commence working. Let's review those important points up to date. Firstly, we make a full visual inspection to ensure maximum safety. Paying attention to the mountings, the condition of the wheels, the maximum gap of three millimeters between the wheel and tool rest, the security of the guards around each wheel, and the condition of the power cable. We next prepare ourselves for personal safety by putting on the correct eye or face protection. Remember that we cannot use ordinary spectacles. Next, ensure that no loose clothing or jewelry is liable to get caught in the wheel. And finally, switch on, standing to the side of the machine whilst it comes up to operating speed. After the break, we shall demonstrate some typical operations using the grinding machine. Welcome back as we proceed to use a bench grinder in order to dress a typical cold chisel. The bench grinder is the ideal tool to use in order to restore dull edges and mushroomed ends of cold chisels. A convenient water tray will be necessary for cooling the work from time to time. With the machine running, hold the chisel firmly, rest the shank against the tool rest and bring the cutting tip against the face of the wheel. The angle of contact must be that of the chisel's cutting edge, which is approximately 60 degrees. Use the tool rest as a guide and a steady as you lightly press the tip onto the wheel's face and move it to and fro across the face of the wheel. After three to four seconds, dip the chisel into water to cool it. This will prevent the tip from becoming soft through overheating. Repeat the procedure on the other edge of the cutting tip. Cool the tip frequently. And remember to move the work across the face of the wheel. Continue dressing the edge until you achieve a 120 degree edge like this that is uniform and sharp. The striking end is dressed to prevent it chipping and causing injury. The end is worked across the stone face and turned simultaneously. Hold the chisel at a 45 degree angle. Cooling is necessary at frequent intervals. Dress the end until you have created a 45 degree chamfer and removed all traces of the mushroom effect. Switch the machine off and let it slow down and stop by itself. Never try and stop the wheels by grinding. The only portion of a wheel that can be used for grinding is the face. Never grind on the edge or side of a bench grinder's wheel. After the practical break, we shall demonstrate another work procedure.
Welcome back. In the next demonstration, you will see how to dress a typical center punch. The point of a center punch has an included angle of 90 degrees and is hollow ground, which means that the tip is kept at 45 degrees to the face of the grinding wheel with the point facing upward when it is ground. Proceed to dress the tip on the finer of the two wheels. Always move the work across the face as you slowly rotate the tip. Notice how the center punch is held and supported. Cool the tip frequently to prevent softening of the metal. Continue until the tip is well dressed, such as this one. We have now described some practical uses of a bench grinder. Let's now review some basic but important rules. Firstly, you should never exert such pressure against the wheel that will cause the spindle speed to drop. Never jab or bump the work against a wheel. Always apply the work gently. Never grind such materials as wood, plastic or glass on a grindstone. Avoid grinding such metals as copper, brass or aluminium, as these will clog wheels rapidly. It is recommended that softer materials be filed or cut with a hacksaw. Keep oil and grease away from grinding wheels. Finally, to preserve a flat face, always work across the wheel's face. Avoid producing grooves in the wheel and never grind on the edge of the wheel. That concludes part one of this series. In the next session, you will learn about the important aspects of grindstone maintenance.